Hello and welcome to the Big Bang. Today, let's imagine humans do not know the mathematical concept of pi. But, the human race has invented computers. Not only that, but you can write a computer program to simulate throwing a dart to a circular target. With these tools, can you estimate the area of a circle without using the mathematical constant pi? Better yet, is there a way to calculate pi using randomness? Well, it turns out that there is. Let's define some parameters and set up the problem before moving on to the coding portion of this assignment. What is the area of the circle? Well, yeah, you know that. The area is pi r squared. So let's say the circle has a radius of 50 centimeters, which is a diameter of 100 centimeters. Cool. Now what is the area of the square? Exactly. With a side length of 2 times r, the area is 4 r squared. Since the circle is inscribed in the square, that means the square has a side length of 100 centimeters. Okay. So what would the ratio of the area of the circle to the area of the square be? Well, the r squared cancels, leaving the ratio to equal pi over 4. Let's return to the context of the problem. We're throwing darts at the circle. Given a high number of darts thrown, the area of the circle, AC, is about equal to the number of darts inside of the circle, and AS, the area of the square, is about equal to the number of darts thrown in total. So let's assume that the ratio of the numbers of darts inside of the circle to the number of darts thrown is proportional to the ratio we found before of the area of the circle to the area of the square. Well, from before, we know the area of the circle over the area of the square is equal to pi over 4. And so by the transitive property, the number of darts inside of the circle over the total number of darts thrown will be about pi over 4. And remember, I'm saying about pi over 4 because pi over 4 is an irrational number. So now that we're going to be solving or approximating for pi, we have a main equation to get pi using parameters that we can plug into the computer program we're about to write. Let's figure out some steps to get pi in the computer program. We can get the denominator, which is the total number of darts thrown, just from user input. In other words, we could specify the total number of darts thrown at the beginning of the program. It's just a parameter. In MATLAB, this is accomplished with the input function. Now, we need to figure out the numerator, which is the total number of darts that have landed inside of the circle. This is not as easy as it was before. Let's first draw the figure with the center at the origin of our Cartesian coordinate system, which is just an xy plane, that spans the outer square. In the Cartesian coordinate system, we can use the coordinates of where the dart lands to find two things. One, if the dart landed inside of the circle, or two, if the dart landed outside of the circle, but still inside of the square. Well, how do we know the coordinates of where the dart lands? MATLAB actually has a function that will generate a random number for you. In MATLAB, you just need to specify the range in which you'd like the random number to fall. Since the square intersects negative 50 and positive 50 on both the x and the y axes, we can specify the same range for the x and y coordinates. Recall that the circle has a radius of 50 centimeters, and the circle is inscribed perfectly snug inside of the square. There are two ways to get a random number. The first is rand i a to b close brackets. This will give you a random integer. The second is rand no arguments times b minus a plus a, which will give you any number within the range, decimals included. We need to do some more manipulation than the second choice since the function rand will generate a random number between 0 and 1, but our range is a little bit different. We are going to use the second option to get a closer estimation of pi. So how do we know if we are inside of the circle every time we throw a dart? Well, if we know the circle has a radius of 50 centimeters, then the distance from the origin must be less than 50 centimeters for the dart to have landed inside of the circle. And we know the fact that distance is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared in a Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, so now we have some criteria to determine if the randomly generated coordinates, which represent darts thrown, fall inside of the circle. We need some way to keep track of the running total that meet the criteria. Remember, 
We are throwing a total of n darts, but not all of the darts will land inside of the circle. Let's very explicitly write out the steps of what we need to do in order to get the number of darts that land inside of the circle. What we have written on the screen can be accomplished with a for loop. We can repeat some defined steps for a specified number of times. So with n darts, all we need to do is loop through all the steps n times. We usually use i for the index. The colon between 1 colon n will generate an array, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to n, and then the for loop will run for as many elements as there are in the array, n of them. Within the for loop, we can include an if statement, since we need to check if the dart lands inside of the circle by calculating the distance of the randomly generated coordinates from the origin. If the distance is less than or equal to the radius of the circle, then we enter the body of the if statement, and we increase the counter by 1. If the distance is greater than the radius, then we do not enter the body of the if statement, and the counter remains the same as before. The dart is not added to the running total. Before we enter the for loop, we need to specify the radius r and the range a to b. We also need to initialize our counter, c and t is equal to 0. Of course, you can name the variable whatever you wish. Every time the condition in the if statement is satisfied, we can increment the counter by 1. C and T is equal to C and T plus 1. And just to note, if you're new to MATLAB but not to programming, plus plus operator is not supported in MATLAB. When we do this, we're storing the running total into the counter variable C and T. In the end, we can collect the denominator from the user input of total number of darts to throw and we can collect the numerator from the current counter, c and t. We have c and t divided by n. Multiplying by 4, we should have our approximation of pi estimate, because that's equal to 4 times the counter c and t divided by n. The problem asked us to find the area of the circle. Since we now have pi estimate, we can simply plug the value into our formula, where we know that the area of the circle is equal to the pi estimate times r squared. So here, our pi estimate, we're simply going to scale up by 50 centimeters squared. So what do you think will happen as we increase n? A good sanity check is to calculate some percent error of the estimated pi value, which is the absolute value of pi minus pi estimate times 100. You can add a few more lines of code and the computer program will just do the rest of the work. That's what's so convenient about automated simulations and computational algorithms. So what happens if you run the algorithm two times with the same n? Try it out for yourself. The code is in the description box below. Will you get the same exact value approximation of pi every time? Well, probably not. This is because x and y are randomly generated. So that means each experiment will result in a different set of x and y coordinates. So that means the number of darts that land in the circle will be slightly different, even with the same number of n darts. Now, let's go back to our initial assumption. Can we assume that the chance of a dart landing inside of the circle is proportional to the area of the circle divided by the area of the square? It turns out yes, we can. This is based on the fact that the coordinates x, y are generated from a uniform distribution, which you will learn about at a later point in the course. A uniform distribution means just that. x is equally likely to be any given value within the range a to b. So if we choose x is equal to rand times b minus a, all of that plus a, then the probability of generating that specific x is p of x is equal to 1 divided by b minus a. With this assumption, we are basically saying that we do not have an experienced dart thrower who would be consistently hitting towards the center of the dartboard. Here, we have someone who's throwing a dart and every single point on that dartboard and within the square has the same probability of being hit. So that means that after n throws, the board will kind of always look something like this. Just kind of a large scatterplot looking thing. So why is this useful? You just wrote a Monte Carlo computer algorithm, which utilizes randomness to solve problems. Pretty much anything we deal with as bioengineers will have some level of stochasticity. Drug delivery systems are a key example. 
Being able to model such systems in silico, which means using computer algorithms, is a powerful skill that you are on your way to being able to do. I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one.